Hello, welcome to CTV. I'm Matt Gibble. And I'm Matt Vanilla. Central Television is a program dedicated to bringing you a look at Hopewell Valley Central High School, students and their activities. CTV is produced, written, and directed by students in the TV programming class. Now, our show. For our first segment, we have a tape of a local band which goes by the name Heads All Empty, consisting of junior Tim Coleman on lead guitar, junior Rob Zaremba on rhythm guitar, junior Kip Kelly on drums, senior Joe Fiorentino on lead vocals, senior Chris Cafuthu on keyboards, and my co-host, senior Matt Vanella on bass. The band will perform an original song, I Want to Walk on the Treetops. Let's listen and watch. I want to... The band was recorded playing right here in front of the high school. We'll be seeing more of the band later in the show. A feature of our show will be student commentaries. I have the pleasure of giving the first commentary. Drinking and driving can kill a friendship, says a popular American Red Cross television commercial. Despite the increase in anti-drinking and driving advertising and the recent stiffer penalties instated by the state of New Jersey, drivers are still failing to see the seriousness of DWI for driving while intoxicated. Over half of the 46,700 people who die on U.S. highways each year have been involved in an alcohol-related accident. Alcohol-related accidents result in numerous deaths, many which, of which are innocent drivers, pedestrians, and children. Often, the offenders of the law are the ones that survive accidents with little or no serious injury, while the innocent bystanders suffer long-standing injuries or even fatalities. So drinking and driving does not only kill friendships, most often innocent people. Stipper penalties must be adopted for DWI arrests. People are continually being arrested for driving while intoxicated without worry of the consequences. In Japan and the Scandinavian countries, people arrested for drunk driving lose their driving pri privileges for life. Why can't the U.S. adopt such a policy? Drinking and driving not only can and does kill friendships, but friends, family members, and loved ones as well. I'm Matt Gibble. Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> Seniors Andrew Osborne and Chuck Norcross recently went on a walking tour of our high school, asking people a question of major importance. Let's look at some of re the responses that they got. Hi, I'm here with Bubba, senior here at Hoval, and I'm going to ask you uh, 
What's your favorite barnyard animal? A pig. A pig. What kind of noise does a pig make? Oink, oink. <laughs> that is a pig really good. There you go. <laughs> Can you give us a little sheep noise? <laughs> Thank you, Dave. And continuing our animal quest, I'm here with sophomore Sarah, Sarah Conifery. And uh, I want to ask you, uh, what's your favorite animal? A monkey. Can you uh, demonstrate anything a monkey does? Sure. She goes. And how about a monkey noise? Uh. <laughs> Tim Nally, a Hoval senior. What's your favorite barnyard animal? Definitely the chicken. What kind of noise does a chicken make? Because it's kind of like this. <laughs> kind of like that. Kind of like that. All right, Tim, thanks a lot. We'll be back to visit that strange barnyard later. At the Mercer County Teen Arts this year, there were many talented groups. In between acts, our cameraman, Joe Fiorentino, went on the campus to see what the kids were doing before they performed. While walking around with the camera rolling, he found two Hoval students practicing. These two talented artists are Josh Kosis and Tillman Isley. <laughs> other students at the festival as well. Our own Hoval Orchestra is up next. Let's listen and watch. Let's take a look at that video tape. Uh, they're playing a song that they uh, played at our spring concert and I think it should be uh, pretty much perfected by this point. I hear they did a very nice job. Very nice job. I, I viewed that myself. I went to the spring concert. I was in it too. Oh concert. really? Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of... No, we're definitely not on Alice Peckenberger. Oh. <laughs> we're on the school orchestra. <laughs> we messed up. No, it was him. It was my fault. Well, anyway, here's some Alice Peckenberger <clears throat> on piano. Alice has been playing, uh... No, we kind of tea. has been playing for uh, nine years and plans to study in the future. <clears throat> uh, 
there was a <clears throat> there was a talented group from Trenton High School, uh, the Trenton High School Jazz Rock Band. I think it's going to be coming up next. <laughs> Talented Alice Pfeifenberger and Sonny Grames played their duet, Bach Double, at the Mercer County Community College Teen Arts Festival. <laughs> Next we have the Timberlane Jazz Band. Yeah, it doesn't. Now we have our our Hovell Orchestra. Let's listen and watch. <laughs> Yet another student commentary from Jean Ann Lesneski. Princeton has small diversity in its population. One really noticeable difference in the people are the artists and the poets that frequent the Arts Council of Princeton on Witherspoon Street. The Arts Council building is a strange mix of art classrooms, studios, and concert halls. Inside the first room on the left is a famous cafe improv room. On the door is painted an appropriate cup of coffee. Every third weekend of the month, people go to see some of the best local talent from the area. One performer, known as Monica, has to be one of the best heart and soul blues singers around. There's the usual milling about in the crowd during other acts, but as soon as Monica hits the stage, everyone listens. Later on in the evening, the poets recite. <coughs> Depending on the mood of the night, anything from Emily Dickinson to nihilistic prose could be presented. Everything turns out to be entertaining. The Arts Council also sponsors shows, concerts, and dances during the summer months. If you're interested in good entertainment at reasonable prices, count on the Arts Council of Princeton and you won't be disappointed. Here we have a uh, Hobal senior, Hunter Grossman, displaying his talents as a juggler. He is juggling bean bags with his hands, but they are also popular to juggle on your feet. This next impressive feat is juggling a long wooden baton in between two smaller between sticks. Your legs again. They're called devil sticks. As easy as it may seem, keeping the baton aloft is quite difficult. Devil sticks were invented in Botswana, where they were first used to pass idle time. Then, as they became more popular, contests were held. People came from all over to compete in these events. 
The man who could perform the most tricks and keep the baton in the air the longest would be awarded the finest maiden the host village could provide. Do you believe that? Wow, I didn't know that. No, me either. Wow. Are you ready for some more animal noise imitators? Heck yeah. I am. Let's go. Yes. Moo, moo. Wait, we haven't got a go yet. Clap. And here I am with freshman. Kristen. Kristen, what's your uh, favorite animal? A fish. Fish. What kind of noise does a fish make? A fish don't make noise. Fish don't make noise. Well, Anybody thanks. else? I do one. I'll do you one? All right. Oh, oh here a little bit. Freshman. And here I. What, you going? I'll do go, 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 go. And another. Uh, continuing our continuing our animal quest. Here I am with freshman. Megan. 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 What's your favorite animal? Um, a dog. A dog. What kind of noise does a dog make? It barks. What has it bark? Can you do. <laughs> and there you have Megan barking. <laughs> And that was Mr. Steubenbort with a, his rendition of a chicken. Dana Young, Shirley Larkin. And they're going to tell us their favorite farm animals. Favorite farm animals? I guess my favorite farm animal is a pig. Um, I think mine would be the chicken. Well, can you do a little impersonation of those animals for us? Sure, we'll do an impersonation. Oink, 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 oink. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And here I am in the cafeteria with Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, what's your favorite barnyard animal? Um, mm, I don't know, really. Uh, maybe um, animal, animal cow. Moo. All right. I'm here with Senior Bill Hutnick. Hey, what's your favorite animal? Oh, that would happen to be the giraffe. Can you give us? I'm quite partial to a penguin today, but the giraffe would definitely be my favorite. Well, can you give us a little impersonation of that? <laughs> of a pre penguin or a giraffe? Both. Well, a giraffe would somehow look like this, and a penguin would look like this. How about a noise? I don't think they make too many noises. Have you ever heard of a giraffe making noise? No, but how about a penguin? I've never heard of a penguin making noise either. <laughs> The boys' spring track team won the CBC Valley Division title this past season. The main force behind the team is Aaron Ectronaut. Let's take a look at a senior, <coughs> my co-host, Matt Gibble, an interview with Aaron. Aaron, what first attracted you to track and field, and specifically shot put, discus, and javelin? Well, uh, when I was a freshman, Mr. D. Cook, our uh, track coach and gym teacher, told me, because uh, I was a pretty strong guy and I was pretty fast, that I should go out for track. And uh, since I was tall, I figured might as well do the, uh, try the shot put, just get some javelin. And the discus over 175 feet. He leads the state in each event. Here we see him against Notre Dame in a recent meet. He will be a national. He will be at nationalist meets later this spring. Next year, next fall, Aaron will go to Texas, A and M, on a full scholarship. What is your favorite event? Well. The shot put would have to be my favorite event, but I also like doing uh, the triple jump, which I do during the summer. I'm not that good at it, but it's, it's just kind of fun because it's a different event to do. But uh, during the regular season, school season that is, I'd have to say uh, the shot put is my favorite. How was your experience at Syracuse for the indoor nationals? That was uh, quite an experience because I got to see uh, one thrower, Dennis Black, threw uh, 68 feet, which I plan to achieve this year. And uh, it was kind of good because I saw him. And I really would like to beat that kid because I don't really like him too much. But because uh, the kind of person he is. And uh, it just gives me 
a little more, gets me a little more excited for uh, Golden West when I'll see him next time. And plan to beat him there. Javelin and runs hurdles. Student Eric Norton recently devised a method of annoying people. He asked them what they would like to blow up. Well, here we go. Is it Eric Amy, what? if you could blow something up, what would it be? Those sunglasses you're wearing. No, no, seriously, what would it be, Amy? No, I wouldn't blow anything up. Alright, if you could blow something up, what would it be? If I could blow something up? You. <laughs> I didn't like that. Let's go. <laughs> June, June, June. If you could blow something up, man. You know? You know what that means, right? Yeah. What would it be? Your head. <laughs> <laughs> get you back for that, boy. We get you back for that. Well, how oh, interesting. Well, now we have a change of pace. <clears throat> After pink slips were handed out, about 104 non-tentured teachers and AIDS because of possible budget cuts. Many students were very bothered. Some students felt that the younger non-tenured teachers should be the last to go. Some students felt that pink slipping was way premature and some students just wanted to keep people informed. Here, Jim Vasilius talked to senior Bradley Jewell about her thoughts on pink slips. Bradley Jewell? And hey, Bradley, can you tell me what that sign was on your back yesterday and what the cause was? Um, yeah, the sign was, you want to know what it said? Yeah. It said, yeah. Uh, no more pink slips, save our teachers, and there's a board, it gave the date of the board meeting, and it was to support our teachers. And what do you hope to accomplish by that? Just to make other students aware of what's going on and hopefully get other people out to the board meeting to help support our teachers. And how do you feel about all this? Um, it's upsetting and and kind of discouraging, but on the other hand, I'm not going to be here next year and it won't really affect me, but I feel bad for people like you. Well, it's really nice of you. Thanks a lot, Brian. You're welcome. <clears throat> well, uh, a, lot of, a lot of students were very upset about this pink slipping, and uh, I, I agree with them. You know, a lot of the good teachers in our district are really, you know, it's a tough thing to be teaching, and when they get pink slipped like this, it just... It's true. It's true. You know, <clears throat> it, it's kind of strange to think that people are thinking more about money than what we're actually here in school for, and that's yeah. to learn, and that's definitely more important than, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, the budget cuts are for. <clears throat> yeah, it was a big shot, a shock to the rest of the school when it definitely, happened. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and now we have another uh, student commentary from Daryl L. Nemeth. Daryl? For six months, there have been 29 fires in Hopewell Township and an unusually high number of fires in Hunterdon County, just above Hopewell. There have been four large structure fires in Hopewell and a few in Hunterdon, which investigators say are caused by arson. These have also been tw there have also been 25 field fires in the past few months. These fires have been occurring sometimes two or three times a day. Is it just coincidence? Could there be one arsonist running around lighting these fires, or are there several different people lighting fires? No one knows for sure. In my opinion, there is more than one arsonist. One person cannot light all of these fires without getting caught. As far as the field fires are concerned, I feel there could be a couple of people lighting them. There have been far too many fires to label them all accidents. Many of the fires were lit alongside of roads, indicating that the arsonist was driving. No one has ever seen the fires being lit. They are always discovered just after the arsonist flees. All of these fires have led to much damage and much mo money lost. The person or persons lighting these fires must be caught before they hurt or kill someone. I'm Daryl Nemeth, and that's my opinion. You know, it's actually quite interesting how Matt and I got to uh, host this show. And, and it's very interesting, I have to admit. We are learning how to do things on the spot. And we're doing this right now on the spot. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty difficult, but we're trying hard. We're <laughs> trying hard. <clears throat> anyway. It's take it away. It's taken a long time to, uh, you know, to make this TV show. It does, it's not an easy process as it might look. No, not as, at all. Uh, on TV news shows, but we're having fun, and that's what we're here for. What counts? Well, Junior Jim Basilio was out doing some taping for a TV class when he got these shots of a crazy motorcycle. Oh, shit. 
Uh oh. Look out. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yo! Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, he was. Oh my god. No, wait, wait, wait! Drunk and driver here! Oh, whoa, check it out. Oh man, this kid is really good. Wait a minute. Wait. I know. Wait a minute. Oh god. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Those videos were truly uh, outrageous. Yes. Uh, a change is a change is about to happen. Let's get right to that change. I'm okay. <laughs> What are we looking at here? Oh, right, a change of pace is next as we watch the Timberland Orchestra perform at a Mercer County Community College right here in New Jersey. Here are the orchestra playing Potch Bell's Cannon. <laughs> Hopewell Valley High School student Carrie Grames also participated in the State Teen Arts Festival. Here's tape of Carrie at the piano. <clears throat> Take a look she, at that footage. She's playing a piece by Rachmaninoff, I believe, and uh, she's been playing for a while. And... I understand that Carrie received much praise from the judges. Well deserved. Good job, Carrie. Was a good job. Definitely. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> I was highly impressed. I've never seen anyone play piano like her. I was there actually filming that, and uh, everyone in the room, just after she was finished, just stood right up and wow. applauded for a full five or six minutes afterwards. That's, that's got to make her feel good. Yeah, yeah. She seemed to be pretty happy. So, uh, the following short video was made by Steven Stiers, Casey Shorthouse, and a little help from myself. It was made for the fall television class and was selected to be shown at the State Teen Arts Festival, where it received much praise. I'm Scott Kevin. I'm 16. I've been skating for about five years, and I live in Paddington, New Jersey. Uh, some of my favorite places to skate around here are around my house in the town, Paddington.
I like skating a lot. It uh, gives me this feeling of freedom and it just, I don't know, it's great and it's what I want to be doing. With video cameras so popular, I guess that we'll be seeing more amateur videos like this in the future. Well, uh, recently we had our uh, senior prom on Friday night. It was a, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. What it was a think? good evening. And uh, who was the prom king and queen? I believe uh, the prom king and queen were uh, Joe Fiorentino, one of our cameramen, and Alyssa Bunderson. How interesting. Well, they got to be proud. Well, in April <clears> of this year, some students in Mr. Gary Cunin's Spanish classes participated in a community reconstruction project in Trenton. The students worked all day planting, hoeing, shoveling to assist the neighbors in this project. Two gardens developed from this day's work. Mr. Kunin, the advisor, thought that this was a very important endeavor. Students learned some things that could not be learned in a classroom. Saying that one of the reasons why this trip is so important for our students is because they have a lot of ideas about Trenton as being entirely run down and you know everything being a problem. But the interesting thing about taking the tour was that we saw both the positive and the negative. We went through some of the drug areas that were some of the worst areas in the city, but we balanced that out with seeing the community gardens that Isles has created and and also some of the nicer neighborhoods in Trenton and that gives the kids a much more realistic picture of what's happening in this city and not to paint an entirely doomed picture but one of a lot of hope. Yeah, it really is important that people get beyond the six o'clock news image of our cities and recognize that the vast majority of people are really working hard in difficult environments, but they're working very hard and they're trying. Um, and to come in and just be able to witness that firsthand is a real important thing for folks uh, who tend to have a pretty great fear of that. And this, the only way to break that down is to touch the heart, not just the head. It's, there's only so much far you can go in a classroom setting to try to influence people's understanding and expectations. This, right. kind of, this kind of thing can touch their hearts. When they were driving through some of the parts of Trenton, and I was noticing some of the reactions, they, there was fear when we were in some of the communities um, because of the, a lot of people out, obviously some people selling drugs, um, but yet when we hit the parts where there were gardens, it was painting an entirely different picture. Um, and the feeling inside is one that, hey, people are doing something positive. People aren't entirely defeated by what's going on around them. And, uh, and that's a feel. you're right, that is a, that's a feeling thing. That's something that you can feel, it's something that you can see with your eyes. And they couldn't get that uh, by me telling them in the classroom. ¿Y cu cuáles plantas has plantado antes en Puerto Rico, por ejemplo? ¿Cuáles son de Puerto Rico? De Puerto Rico plantamos el cilantrillo, que es de Puerto Rico, sí. y que aquí se da a tiempo. Y eso se usa en el arroz también, ¿verdad? Y el, eso es lo que usamos para hacer el sofrito de la joven. Sí. Y lo, We'd like to reiterate that a show like this does take a lot of work. As a matter of fact, we're doing this out of class time. So <clears throat> we'd like to thank some of the people who happily volunteered and you know, gave us a hand. Um, there's Jill Upman, uh, Casey Shorthouse, and Frank Lovett. Yeah, they helped us with uh, cue cards and sound. And it's, you know, we couldn't have done this show without them. And they really were a big help, even though they won't show up on the credits. So we'd like to thank them. Let's keep it in mind. Well, that's our show. We'd like to thank you very much for tuning in. And as we close with the credits, we'll hear from the band Heads All Empty once again, doing their song, Nothing Matters. Goodbye. Bye. All right, all right. Stop, stop, stop. stop. All right, we got the name of this next song is Nothing Matters. It's all about our band's philosophies on life.
for you. <laughs> You speak.